Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, as promised, former BYU and NFL linebacker David Nixon. He had 43 tackles for loss in the Mountain West, Jerem. Excellent. David Nixon, welcome back to the program. Hey, what's going on, fellas? Uh, we're good, man. Uh, and as much as I'd like to continue talking about how awesome you were as a BYU football player, let's talk about what Taysom Hill did yesterday. You watched him play and orchestrate the comeback against the Chargers. I know it was a preseason game, but two second-half touchdowns. The Saints beat the Chargers. What was the atmosphere like watching your brother-in-law, Taysom Hill, do that for the New Orleans Saints? It was a little nerve-wracking. I was sitting with his wife, my sister, uh, and she uh, she gets very nervous for those games as well, um, especially when he goes in. But, uh, you know, the, the whole stadium, like you said, is a preseason game, right? And so there's not a lot of emotion in those preseason games. And then you throw on the fact that the Chargers – you know, we're still trying to find their identity here in L.A. Frankly, there were more Saints fans there than L.A. Charter fans, no <laughs> lie. In fact, in, in fact, mid-game, they started doing the Who Dat chant, and it took over the whole stadium. Uh, and, and, and when they were playing defense there in the second half, trying to get the ball back for Taysom, they started chanting defense, and it drowned out the stadium as well. It was, pre- it was pretty amazing. But with all that being said, it was, uh, man, it was fun to watch. You know, it was, it was a pretty flat game for – um, for the Saints up until Taysom came in there really in the second half. Of course, he took the last drive there in the first half, um, and, and they just kind of kept it conservative. But came in that second half and provided that spark. And it's funny, after we, you know, after the game, we talked with him, and he said, he's like, I, I knew I had to provide something. I had to provide ten, some type of spark. And so there was, a, there was a play there where he had a read option, and he said, listen, I'm, he, he told us, he's like, I just kept it. He's like, I knew I had to keep it. I knew I had to create something. Uh, to get a spark for our team. And sure enough, he's got that big game where he stiff-armed the player and um, kind of started riding that momentum for the rest of the game. So it was fun to watch. It was uh, it was typical Taysom, and it was fun to watch it at the NFL level because you had guys that, once again, defenders taking wrong angles, thinking they can beat him to the sideline, and he, he gets around the corner and uses that 4-4 speed and, and trots down the sideline. So uh, it's fun to watch him on the run and, of course, passing. I mean, he had a, what a day passing. He was you know 11-15 to 15 for 136 yards. I liked most about it was how he managed the game and, and the throws he made. I mean, there was one where the deep dig, uh, where he kind of rolled out to his uh, left a little bit, and a deep dig across the middle, put it over the backer, right between him, backer and the safety for a perfect uh, like 15, 20-yard pass for a nice completion. And uh, it just shows you kind of the, how Taysom's evolved as a passer as well. So just a great game all around, exciting to watch. Is this Taysom Hill at the peak of his powers, David? Is this the best version of Taysom Hill we've seen yet? You know, I, I, yeah, I think so. I, th- I think this he's starting to evolve into a true quarterback. I mean, we've talked about this in the past, right? At BYU, every single offseason, this is a guy who was nursing some type of injury. He was trying to rehab to get himself back in playing shape. He didn't get a chance to evolve as a quarterback. He wasn't doing things like Zach Wilson going down to passing camps and working with pro quarterbacks, uh, although he would have if he could have. But instead, he was trying to get himself healthy from a, from one of his season-ending injuries. And so... Um, it was a guy that never really got to refine and work on his craft until now in the NFL where he stayed healthy, uh, knock on wood, and he's been able to, during the offseason, work at, work on his skills as a quarterback and work with other quarterbacks. Him and Drew Brees are really tight, so they, uh, they spend a lot of time in the offseason working together. And so, um, you know, finally he, he, he's able to work on it, and we're seeing it pay off. We're seeing it pay dividends. He's, he's playing at a high level right now, and um, it's honestly it's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, yesterday was a blast. David Nixon with us on BYU Sports Nation discussing Taysom Hill and his future now with the New Orleans Saints. He's not making a ton of money, David. In fact, Jaron pointed out $645,000 this season. Then he's a restricted free agent next season. But he's clearly happy working with Drew Brees and being with Sean Payton and the New Orleans Saints. So in your best opinion, what's going to happen with Taysom Hill as he moves forward with the New Orleans Saints? Well, they, they love him there. I know that. I mean, you look at the interviews yesterday after the game with Sean Payton, and you can see that when he talks about Taysom, he kind of he, he kind of just gets a smirk on his face. Don't and, we uh, all, David? Kind of, kind of lights up a little bit. You know, you know what's funny? Yes, we do because we're all BYU fans. But I'm talking people around the entire New Orleans Saints organization and around the NFL. You can tell they light up as well. And it, I posted a picture on Twitter about uh, walking around the stadium about one guy wearing a Taysom Hill jersey, and he wasn't the only one. There were multiple guys wearing the Taysom Hill jersey uh, around the stadium, and the people behind us, three rows behind us, when, when Taysom came in, uh, they were chanting Taysom's name. I mean, it's just – it's it's. I, I turned to my sister, and I go, man, this is just crazy to see, you know, a guy that was undrafted 
went to Green Bay. They cut him. You know, we weren't sure what was going to happen. Next thing you know, he's picked up off waivers by the Saints and then to turn into a household name in New Orleans to where he's one of four jerseys in the – one of one of the four offensive jerseys in the pro shop at the stadium that's being sold. <laughs> it's, 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 Taysom, it's Taysom, Drew Brees, Alvin Kamara, and Michael Thomas are the four, <laughs> four jerseys that are being sold. It, it's just – we were just laughing about it yesterday. just has gone, you know, full circle where – you weren't sure what, how this whole route was going to turn out for Taysom, and, and now you see him as, like I said, a household name and uh, doing super well. And uh, man, it's, it's just it's been fun to watch it all come about. Now, what's interesting here is Teddy Bridgewater is the backup. He's a guy that's been proven as a starter. Right now, he's behind Drew Brees. Drew Brees probably has a couple more years left in him. It would seem right. Um, it's an interesting situation with Taysom Hill because they're not using him as a quarterback. But last night, perhaps, was what happened with the Packers, which is that another team sees it and maybe wants him in the future. Or do the Saints, uh, you know, let go of Teddy Bridgewater next year and then Taysom Hill, you're the backup slash utility guy. What do you think? I mean, listen, that's what this preseason is all about. I mean, that, that's why you see Drew Brees is not playing. He didn't play a snap yesterday. He didn't play a snap the week before uh, because it's to get these guys reps in the offense and to take a good look at him. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater is not going anywhere. They pay him seven, they're paying him $7.2 million this year. So he's, he's, he's got a firm spot on the roster. But moving forward, yeah, who is the successor to Drew? Because you're right, he has probably one to two years left. Um, and, and that's why these reps are so crucial, and that's why you've got to take advantage of them. That's what the NFL is all about. You get those opportunities, you've got to take advantage of them. So uh, who knows what, what, you know, what they're thinking as far as long term. I, I think a lot of it will be dictated into this year. You know, Taysom's a restricted free agent. Like you said, he's in a contract year right now. And so we'll see uh, if the Saints are willing to pony up and pay for him or if there's another team that's going to come along and pay him more and the Saints don't want to match it. So, um, you know, that's why it's even more crucial that every opportunity Taysom gets, he takes advantage of it because he's in that contract year where, where he's looking to get paid. So um, yesterday definitely helped his cause. Former NFL and BYU linebacker David Nixon with us on BYU Sports Nation. Watched Taysom Hill in person take care of the Los Angeles Chargers of San Diego yesterday. Uh, David, when you look at Taysom as a potential starting quarterback, is it going to happen at some point? Will he start as a quarterback somewhere at some time in the NFL in a regular season game? Yes, I, I think he does. And I don't know if that necessarily comes to him being a starter week one, but uh, I'm confident that at some point in his career, whether he's a backup for the next few years and, and they get into week 16, 17, and you know, they made the playoffs and they rest their starting quarterback, be it Drew Brees or somebody else, they throw him in as a starter. But, I, yes, I, I think he will be a starter at, in at least one game of his NFL career. Uh, because Mainly because I, th I think you look at him, the way he commands that offense, <clears throat> and Sean Payton mentioned that as well yesterday, that he, when he came in, the way he was able to handle the entire offense, get guys in the right place, he understands the playbook. I mean, he's just very comfortable when he's back there. Um, and, and I think, you know, coaches look at that, and they have confidence in him that he can go out there and deliver um, and that he's not going to go out there and screw up. And so – uh, yeah, I, I think at some point he will start a game. No question. He's making 645 this year. Did you ever make more than 645? I could only find 615 with the Panthers the one year with you. <laughs> you know what's crazy? NFL, so I think the rookie minimum, my rookie year was like 395, 400. So just go to show you every year the rookie minimum goes up and up and up. And, uh, you know, fast forward, what, 10 years later, um, shoot, not even that. Yeah, like eight eight years later, and it's already up to six forty five. I mean, rookies in a few years will be making seven seven fifty plus their first year. I mean, I guess this is it takes a third year, so it goes up every year that you're in the league. But even then, it's yeah, it's crazy how it continues to go up. But good for them. I mean, the big contracts being signed. In fact, I, we were uh, we were leaving the family area after the game. Went down to say hi to him and chat, and we're leaving the area. I saw Mike Thomas there, and uh, I turned to my my father-in-law who's there with me i said man that's what a hundred million dollars looks like right there that's a uh, <laughs> fresh contract right yeah yeah fresh fresh contract that's that's a good life right there but uh, good for them they deserve it david nixon currently working on his uh contract negotiations yeah. to get to 100 million with, at some point with jimmy balderson exactly <laughs> um no but i'm i'm i'm, I'm more uh, i'm more playing on BYU tv to pony up this year for the 100 yeah. million yeah exactly <laughs> If we get into a power five, we can chat, right? Uh, Taysom, <laughs> Taysom turns 29 in four days. What are you getting him for his birthday? 
uh, a nice text message that says happy birthday, probably. <laughs> I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. I'll give him the same thing he got me for my birthday. How about that? Yeah, nothing? Yeah, nice. nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, let's finish with this. We are 10 days out from BYU in Utah. It's been 10 years since BYU beat Utah. We are about to list the 10 reasons we believe BYU will end the streak against Utah. What are some of your reasons that you believe BYU could do it this year? I'll, I'll say my biggest reason, and I think it's because you, you've seen the AP poll come out, um, you, or at least it's coming out this morning. I haven't seen it, officially seen it, but I saw there were news, news about it coming out. It's out. It's officially out. I mean, what did Utah come in at? Number 14. 14. Number 14. So that leads me to my point. I think all of the pressure is on Utah. I mean, when you're ranked top 15 in the country – um, it, it, they've had high expectations coming off the type of season they had last year. Uh, I think all the pressure's on them. And, and I remember back in my 08 season, we started off 6-0 and undefeated. Um, we were ranked as high as, I think, top 10 or 15 in the, in, the, in the polls. And you feel that pressure. It's real pressure. As you're walking around campus, people are talking, and, you know, you, you open up Twitter, whatever it may be, and, and there it is flashing at you, you know, your ranking. There's real pressure there. And so – I think this is a game where everyone expects Utah to come in and beat BYU. And when you're BYU, you can play loose. And, you, I mean, everyone's expecting to lose anyway. So why not go out there and, and shock the world and uh, play loose and, and play with some confidence and, and, and try to steal a game? Add on top of the fact that it's a robbery. But uh, I, think, I think the pressure is one thing that's real that Utah have to deal with. And I think maybe BYU can use that to their advantage and, and see if they can't uh, steal this game. I mean, it's exciting. We're uh, – the countdown's officially on, right? I mean, as of this Thursday, we're officially one week away. The That's countdown tough. is on. What are you? We've been doing this since December. What are you talking about? <laughs> just, yeah, that's my point. We're, we're, we're tomorrow. We're what single digits? I mean, finally yeah. we can actually talk about it. Until now, <laughs> uh, it's, it's hard. You know, trying to count down from. 300 days, whatever yeah, we start. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> David, it's great to catch up with you, man. We appreciate the time. Uh, glad you enjoyed your trip and uh, time with family as you watch Taysom do his job. Yeah, fun times, guys. Talk to